good day wherever you are uh, I would want to take you through this question practical question paper 3 in Kenya you are provided with aqueous sulfuric 6 acid labeled solution A solution B containing 10.4 grams per liter of potassium carbonate so this one is the mass in one liter therefore it is important to write it down that it is the mass for which is in grams per liter it is important to note that a clean piece of magnesium ribbon made by orange indicator you are required to determine the concentration of solution a let us go to procedure a using a measuring cylinder place 25 centimeters cube of solution A into a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Actually, remember that 250 milliliter equal to 250 centimeters cube. Add distilled water to make 250 centimeters cube of solution. Label the solution C. Place solution C in the burette. Using a pipette and a pipette filler, place 25 cm cube of solution B into a conic flask, a conical flask. Add two drops of methyl orange indicator provided and titrate with solution C. Record your result in table one below. Like I've always said, first understand what's happening in the question. We have solution B. Solution B is reacting with solution C. But what is solution C? Solution C is solution A, which is a refuric acid, but which has been diluted. Therefore, sodium carbonate, uh, sorry, potassium carbonate, is reacting with sulfuric acid, solution C. It is important. So let me give you the values we want to use. 9.1 9.2 9.2 the value the initial let us take 0 0 0.0 0, 0.0 our ultimate key is 9.1 9.0 and 9.2 let us do the average average is 9.1 plus 9.0 plus 9.2 divided by 3 this one is going to give us 9.1 centimeters cube 9.1 centimeters cube calculate the concentration remember the question starts here calculate the average calculate the concentration of potassium carbonate in solution B concentration so whenever you are asked concentration in this equation they have not finished for example the small per liter or what but they actually mean in more per liter so let us calculate the morality of solution b so let us see what we are provided with we are told that solution b it is 10.4 grams in one liter and in the question we have been given that carbon is this so it means we are, we are going to get the rfm the molar mass of b from this so let us find the molar mass of potassium carbonate potassium carbonate is k2co3 which is equal to that 9 times 2 uh, plus 12 plus 40 okay 16 times 3 which is going to be 48 so the total is 138 that is the rfm of potassium carbonate but we know morality because we want morality concentration equal to mass in grams per liter divided by rfm so the mass in one liter of potassium carbonate is 10.4 grams therefore Uh, this means that 10.4 divided by 138 
will give us the morality which is 0 0.075 capital M. So if you are wondering where I get I got this from formula from we have dealt with I can also repeat something here. We have this formula this triangle here where we say that morality mass in grams per liter R F M R F M is equal to moral mass. So if I want to calculate morality I have mass in grams per liter of that compound, then I will calculate the RFM. If you have RFM, you have mass, you can calculate morality very simple. That's what I have done here. Concentration of sulfuric acid solution C. Now remember solution B, what which volume? 25 of B is reacting with 9.1 solution C. 25 centimeters cube solution B is re as reacted with 9.1 to reach neutralization or to, to reach the end point. Therefore, we know sulfuric acid as reacted with potassium carbonate to give us potassium sulfate plus carbon dioxide plus water. The most important thing when we are writing the equation is to, to get the ratio. But you can see the equation, the ratio is 1 to 1, meaning that the number of moles of the carbonate is equal to the number of moles of sulfuric acid solution C. We know the morality of this solution is here. here. The morality of the carbonate is here. But we know what was the volume of sodium carbonate used? It is 25 centimeters cube. Solution B. Solution C. This is solution B. The ratios, we know the number of moles in 25 of solution of this one. Sorry, we know the number of moles of the carbonate in a thousand. So now we can get the number of moles of the carbonate in 25. So we will say a thousand centimeters cube of solution B has this morality uh, 0 0.0754 moles so we will say 25 centimeters cube solution b will contain how many now this one will give 25 times this divided by this and it is going to give us 0 0.00188 moles so this is the number of moles of 25 sodium carbonate that reacted with a 9.1 centimeters cube solution c but what is solution C? Remember, it is sulfuric acid, which was initially called A. Very good. But the question is asking us to calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid in solution C. Concentration meaning morality. Although here yeah, they were supposed to say a concentration of this in moles, in moles per liter. To make it clear in moles per liter so we are calculating the concentration so we will first before that we need to know the relationship between this and this the ratio is one to one meaning that the moles of c is the same as this one because the ratio is one to one so moles of sulfuric acid solution c that was in 19 is that one so moles of sulfuric acid solution c equal to zero point zero zero one eight eight because the ratio is one to one but the volume of uh, c that reacted with b is nine point one therefore we say nine point one centimeters cube solution c has zero point zero zero one eight eight moles one thousand in a liter per liter centimeters cube solution c will contain how much so it is this times this divided by this. Take your calculator and press. So this one is giving us 0 0.207. That is the moral of solution C. Yes. 
Next question is to calculate the concentration of sulfuric acid in solution A, that is in moles per liter. Concentration of solution of sulfuric acid, sulfuric six acid in solution A in moles per liter. In moles per liter. Now this one needs you to understand one thing. First, remember we what we did here. We took in procedure A, we took 25 centimeters cube of solution A and diluted this 25 to form 250 centimeters cube. What it means is that the number of moles in 250 solution C, number of moles, number of moles in 250 solution C, solution C will be exactly equal to the number of moles of solution A in 25. Let me repeat once again. That the number of moles in 25 solution A is equal to the number of moles of 250 centimeters cube solution C. Why? Moles does not change when you dilute a solution. So first let us calculate the number of moles in 250. Now we know that from our previous calculation, we know the morality in a thousand of solution C contains this. We can also say 25 of solution C contains these moles. 25, yeah, no, 9 contains this, what about 250? Or we can say a thousand centimeters cube solution C contains this, what about 250? Both, in both cases, we will get the same answer. So first, let us say that uh, 9.1 centimeters cube solution C has 0 0.00188 moles. So we will ask 250 centimeters cube solution C would contain how much? How many? How, how, how many moles, right? Yeah, so it is 250 times 0 0.018 divided by 9.1 and the answer is going to be 0 0.0252 moles. So this is the number of moles. 0 0.052 is the number of moles of solution C in 250. Right? And remember this, that moles of 250 centimeters cube solution C is exactly equal to moles is exactly equal to moles in 25 centimeters cube solution A. I have explained that. So now we want the concentration of A in moles per liter. Now we will ask 25 centimeters cube solution A has the number of moles in here, this one. 0 0.052 moles. What about a thousand? A thousand centimeters cube will give us how many moles? Therefore, it is this times this divided by this thousand times 0 0.052 divided by 25, and that one gives us zero. Is it zero? Did it? No, one. Help me, my calculator is fading, therefore it is the 2.06 capital M. The molality of the solution A is 2.06 moles in one liter. Let us look at the qualitative analysis part of it. You are provided with solid Z. Cut out, out the Cut out the cut out the test below to identify the anion and cation present. Put a spatula end four of solid Z in the boring tube. Add about ten centimeters of distilled water. Divide the solution into three portions. So solid is solid Z. Solid Z dissolve. Uh, dissolves uh, dissolves forming a cara 
a catalyst solution so the solid dissolve dissolves forming a catalyst solution so we know that what it means that is that we don't have the colored ions so we can say that is cu2 positive the copper ions which is blue the ion 2 positive which is green and the ion 3 positive which is a uh, brown are absent that one is okay or you can say that solid solid z is soluble in water so it is that is soluble in water you can say this one or that one to the first portion add sodium hydroxide until in excess so here no white ppt we expect a white precipitate but there is no white ppt in drops neither is there a white precipitate when in excess therefore no white ppt no white ppt in drops and in excess so if there is no white ppt when you are adding sodium hydroxide it simply means that there is no aluminium ion the aluminium ions are not there magnesium 2 positive all these so many ions are there so we don't want to write what is absent we want to write what is present so what would be present here we suspect that potassium ions sodium ions could be present why because we know all salts of potassium all salts of sodium are soluble they form a color solution therefore maybe this one got inside and it was dissolved therefore because it, it the, the all salt the salt that was formed was soluble in this because this one is potassium and sodium so this and this are present so the second portion add ammonium hydroxide drop wise until in excess no white ppt is formed no white ppt is formed in drops because it was drop wise until in excess so we will say that in drops there was no white precipitate and until in, in excess there was no white precipitate and in excess and in excess there was no white precipitate in either drop wise or until in excess so that one actually tells you potassium ions sodium ions are suspected to be present I want to, to get used to giving positive results that what is present, what is suspected to be present and avoid as much as you can what is absent. Using a metallic spatula, scoop a liter of solid Z, place it in an unluminous flame of a buns and panner. Observation. Our observation is that a yellow flame is produced. Produced. A yellow flame is produced. So if a yellow pro a flame is produced, that is actually sodium ions that are present. It is sodium ions that are present. So what I'm talking about is the flame test. I hope you have come across the flame test. Uh, before I continue to the next one, I want to show you the different the, 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 the colors of different cations when they are uh, burnt. So we have different colors depending on the cation present. Therefore, check, check this one. Uh, this is what we call a frame test. Uh, various ions or the cations, I mean, produces different uh, colors when you burn them for example when you burn barium solution uh, use either using a spatula or whatever you are using or a grass load it will burn with a green flame and uh, that one will tell you it is barium nit ions that are present if it burns with a yellow or orange flame uh, especially yellow it is the presence of sodium ions 
what if the frame is blue stroke green it appears like blue or green that is copper uh, if it is dirac pink pale blue pale purple flame like that then it is uh, potassium ions like that so let me show you the various colors of the now look at barium that is the color of barium sodium that is how it will burn so you can see it is yellow very yellow what about copper two ions copper two ions will burn like that and that is the flame you will see and then you in the inference you will write copper two ions what about lead that is it what about potassium purple you can see that potassium ions rhythm calcium ions present so those are the type that way you should know and this is what we call the flame test so you will be asked it for example dip a clean spatula in the solution for example in the third post solution and then test for the cations present and then the flame test like that thank you thank you so let us continue to the third portion add acidified barium nitrate we are adding acidified barium nitrate acidified mark that acidified barium nitrate so we expect a white precipitate when we are adding barium nitrate right but here there is no white ppt no white ppt is formed So if no white PPT is formed, I want to shock you by writing that SO3 to minus carbonate uh, minus is present. Now I know you are wondering, why am I saying that no white PPT is formed and yet I'm saying that the sulfite and the sulfate, the carbonate is present. That is correct. You have a right to be worried. Here I want to explain this. Remember barium nitrate has been acidified. It, it, it contains an acid in it. So immediately you put barium nitrate which contains an acid in it. It, it forms a colorless solution with this and this. Remember the sulfite and the carbonate dissolve in the acid to form a colorless solution. So the color solution will not form a white precipitate, therefore it is no white PPT. So whenever you are adding barium nitrate which has been acidified, it gives you a color a no white PPT, it means this and this are present. Let me put it in another way. We could have been asking that add two drops of barium nitrate, right? Followed by five drops of nitric acid. What could be observed? A white precipitate is going to be formed, and then the white precipitate will dissolve in the acid. We will write this and this, right? So here we have shortened it. Therefore, the acidified is going to the to, to to dissolve this and this, and that's why there is no white PPT. I hope you have understood me well. Thank you. Uh, to a spatula and full of salt Z. so suppose before i move to the next one suppose here we say white ppt is formed we are adding acidified barium nitrate and then a white ppt is formed that is a confirmation that the sulfate is present it is a confirmation that the, so the sulfate is present. If you add acidified barium nitrate and then a white PPT is formed, that one is sal the sulfate and ion that is present. To the, uh, to the uh, to a spatula and four of solid Z, add two more uh, HCl and warm place uh, chroma, chromate uh, paper at the mouth of the test tube. So, uh, instead of chromatic paper, you can use acidified, acidified potassium dichromate. It works the same. Dichromate is, is the same. So what is the observation? Uh, 
so this was the car the, the correct this one just were by the way so uh, the orange the orange acidified potassium this is the one we used potassium dichromate dichromate uh, changes changes to green changes to green so if as if you are adding a solid and then uh, but acidified potassium and dichromate is is turns for or changes from pop orange to green uh, what it is confirming is that the s o3 2 minus is present for better understanding on this one i would actually refer you to solvent its compound as you read it, that topic self and its compound, you will see uh, this one working there very well. Uh, kindly subscribe for me. Do you want me to cry? Then you subscribe for me. I can cry if you want. Please subscribe. Why are you not subscribing since you are speaking? Now you are watching something which is interesting you. Instead of subscribing, you just leave it like that. It doesn't cost anything at all. Thank you. Please subscribe.